Okay guys, the following is huge. It is how do you gain all the capabilities of a flexible image sequence X sheet in Blender whereby you can cause certain images to show when you want them to show. You can loop them, you can reverse them, yada 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 yada. What's the use case? Well, the use case would be a situation like this in Krita where we have this shot. Let's just look at what happens. Okay, so she raises her eyebrows and then there's some lip sync. Okay. Well, what if we wanted to repurpose the lip sync and use it in a different scene? What if we wanted to retime this situation so that she raises her eyebrows at a different time? And the most important thing is, what if we wanted to program a 3D camera move into this shot, which would be utterly impossible with Credo? If you're wondering why not do that in Open Tunes, Dave, um, I don't really have a good reason for that because uh, I use Open Tunes a lot, but I will say that the thing I learned how to do today essentially gives you parity in terms of capabilities between the Krita plus Blender combination versus Open Tunes. And whether, you know, which software is the more stable or reliable uh, is something you can kind of debate. I happen to enjoy uh, doing. Uh, keyframe animation, cell animation in Krita, and I'm pretty comfortable with Blender because I've used it for decades. Um, and I use OpenTunes a lot, but for whatever reason, I do seem to generally get better results in total using Krita, which is why most of the shots I've done lately have been in Krita. But I'm not jettisoning, op jettisoning OpenTunes. I'm just showing you that this methodology is really, really powerful. Okay, so what did we do? I don't want to... Um, waste a lot of time here so I will say this her face has two expressions as you can see one two and then she's got a bunch of lip sync so what I already did behind the scenes was I took these keyframes of her uh, facial expressions and just packed them together and rendered this out as a two image image sequence and then I also did the same thing with the voiceover where I hit all and just drag these together and then render that out as an image sequence as well. So with that, we can leave Krita. And by the way, another <clears throat> another inherent benefit to this workflow that I'm I'm showing you here is that later on we could we could take the finished art of Akari, which we actually have from another shot, and we could in Blender go ahead and just substitute, i.e., point Blender to the finished art instead of the sketch art, and then just re-render, and we're good to go. So as we come into Blender, what we see is we see the obviously the imagery that we had before okay um, and I'm gonna go ahead and start from scratch to just just to make it fair <laughs> okay so let's re reload our startup file and show you the steps here <clears throat> to have really good control over your image sequences in blender for 2d animation what you're gonna do is you're gonna go shift a add images as planes so what we're doing is we're taking these um, visual elements and we're mapping them to planes in Blender in the 3D space. Now I've saved that here on the temp drive on the S, uh, the S drive temp folder I should say and I'm going to grab these two images which are Akari 0 and Akari 1. All right. It's tempting to make it shadeless because that basically makes it so that your uh, animated elements are self-illuminating. I'm going to say generally better to use emit because what emit does is at least it gives you the ability to turn it down and if you wanted to in blender you could use lights to create gradient effects or other um, you know color adjustments in your shot okay so we are going to use the alpha I think most of the other settings can remain the same uh, the one key one here is animate image sequence so we want blender to treat this as a sequence not as two images map to two planes got it okay let's import that and now we see what we see alright and as you can see when we go to frame uh, two her expression changes so now there is we could kind of fuss a bit here about the zero indexing of the the numbers but let's not belabor it the point is intuitively you would think at frame zero you'd see the first shot and at frame one you'd see her expression change and blenders treating it the differently it's frame zero is frame one in the timeline and frame 
one is frame two in the timeline. Okay, like I said, let's not cry about that. That's obviously you can just adjust accordingly. So I don't want to be looking at grease pencil here. I want to be looking at the dope sheet. <clears throat> now, let's just look at a few things. First thing we want to do is jump into our properties and see what's really going on here under the hood. Okay, you can see that this is just a plane in 3D space and we've just mapped the image sequence to it. Okay, good to go. So if we go in here, and uh, by the way, if you're wondering if this all works in Blender 2.8, I'm not going to belabor it. I will say that it does sort of work, but it's a little less reliable. Like you don't see playback in the, in the real-time screen the way you expect, and it's a little persnickety. So for me, as it is with so many other things, I'm sticking with Blender 2.79 at the moment. Okay. So now we look at the material, and now if we look at the texture, you can see that the, the images, the image sequence is mapped to the plane. So Blender knows that it's an image sequence. I have tested this with uh, MP4 files, so basically video files. It does seem to work pretty well. It uh, doesn't seem to matter whether it's an image sequence or a movie. Okay. Blender seems to know that there are two frames, and it's telling it to start on one. So if we want to make the adjustment that I was referring to a moment ago, we would simply tell it to start on zero. I believe that would do the trick. And indeed it does. You see that on frame zero, we see the first expression. On frame one, we see the second one. So things are behaving as expected, which means we can put the offset at zero. <clears throat> and then we see if we, by doing that, that means if we go to frame one, okay, so let me just make this clear. If we set the offset at zero, we're seeing the second image. That's okay. What we're trying to get at here is by having everything indexed to zero the way we originally would have expected, and I emphasize, you could skip all this if you want to. It's not that important. You just have to adjust all your numbers by one. Okay. Now when we go to offset one, look what happens. We're seeing the first image on the first. So, so image number one is on frame number one. Okay. <clears throat> now, my only excuse for the fact that I'm even not that I wasn't able to show this to you a long time ago is that if you try to do what I'm doing here with background images it won't work in other words like right here if I if I were to hit the I key over this to animate it blender says no you can't animate that if I if I mouse over the start time and I hit the I key blender says no you can't animate that what I did not know is that you can animate this the offset can be animated. That's hugely important because the ability to animate this offset is the key to being able to do all the all the animation, um, everything you would do in an X sheet, you can do here. Let's find out how. I will tell you that you do want auto refresh to be turned on. Generally, you'd want cyclic or cyclic to be turned off. Now there is a there is a use case where you'd want cyclic to be turned on. Okay, if we turn it on, what's going to happen is the animation is going to loop forever. Okay, and that means let's see if there's two frames offset zero. Let's see if this works. Let's just uh, okay, yeah. So it's going to loop forever. So if you've got an animation where the image sequence is already a pre-set loop of the correct length, then a good way to create a looped version of it would be to just do what I just did there. Okay. That's not what we're going to do. We're going to try to maintain a little more control over things because we want to retime it. Okay, and the way we do it is we'll go to frame zero and we say, well, which image do we want to see? I want to see this one. So I go to that offset and I just hit the I key and, and it's keyframed. Okay, and you say at one second is when I want her to raise her eyebrows. So I go to 24, go to the next image, and we see that, oh, wait, there's a problem. Um, okay, I'm going to actually tell you something here that I probably should have said earlier. If you were going to use cyclic to loop uh, an image sequence, then it would make sense to have the number of frames match the movie length. However, in testing this workflow, what I've found is you really want this to be one. In other words, what you're telling Blender is there's only one image in the sequence, but then I'm going to manually tell you what image I want you to show. I hope that makes sense. So just having the frames, no matter how many images are in the sequence, having the frames set at one seems to be the way to do it. Okay? So thus, I go to frame 24, and 
I changed my uh, offset in this case to zero. Uh, and again, let me emphasize this. If this was a long movie that you were retiming, um, all my other experiments involved much longer image sequences. So what I'm seeing here is that when you've only got an image sequence of just a couple frames, the, the zero and one numbering is a little winky. But I think we're, we're okay here. On frame 24, I would think that this would be frame two. And in point of fact, um, I would think that the first frame would be, uh, this expression here would be frame zero. Because I'm pretty sure if we look at the image sequence itself, you'll see that this is frame zero. And this is frame one. So they're just, when you're only dealing with two frames, just realize the the zero and one thing can be a little bit winky. But I'm going to change the offset here to zero at frame 24. Sorry, I need to go to frame 24. And keyframe it. Okay, and look what happens. Now, another point I want to emphasize is if this was a long image sequence where there was a smooth transition, let's say, between these two face positions, um, then what would happen is Blender would play that whole sequence from here to here. Now this is super cool for retiming because one thing you, you realize is you can put this change wherever you want, right? And if this were a sequence that was fully animated, then Blender would drop it, it would drop whatever, it would do the math and drop whatever frames it needed to, to drop in order to get from here to here as smoothly as possible, which is super cool. Why do I mention that? I mention that because in most cases, if you're doing a retiming situation like this, and this were a sequence or a video that had lots and lots of frames, you would not want Blender to play smoothly from this shape to this shape. You'd want it to jump from this to this. How do you do that? Here's how you do it with the interpolation. So I'm going to grab both of these keyframes. And then I'm going to hit the T key and change the interpolation to constant. Okay? Now, in this case, because there's only two frames, Blender was doing it anyway, because there's no extra frames to interpolate with. Okay? But in the normal case, uh, Blender would not just jump from this p picture to this picture. It would, it would smoothly play from this picture to this picture, compressing time as needed. By changing the interpolation to constant, now you have the ability to take an image sequence or a movie and grab frames out of it wherever you want and completely change the animation however you want. Okay? So now in this case, if I wanted to switch back to the other expression after another half a second, then I just go here, grab the first key, and hit Shift D and put that at frame 36. And what we should see is, see that? She jumps back. Okay? So, so if you want to ask again, why not do this sort of thing in OpenTunes? I'll tell you one reason is that as cool as the plastic tool is in OpenTunes, it's not as cool as doing this in Blender. Going into edit mode, hitting W, subdividing your imagery a few times, and then either adding bones or, um, or uh, uh, shape keys. Okay, because as you can see, we have the ability to make a lot of uh, changes to our you know characters in post in blender and we could do it with shape keys as I said or you could actually add a bone rig and you get all the benefits of the open tunes plastic tool so there's that okay so now what about the lip sync so this might actually be a better illustration in a way what I'm gonna do is move this back a little bit in the um, I would say the Z space, but the truth is that I've got I've got my coordinate system a little different, so we're actually moving her back in the Y coordinate. For most people, it, that would probably be Z, because X and Y would be up and down as Y and across as X. In my case, uh, it's a little different. But anyway, um, we're going to do the same process again. So we're going to add images as planes, and this time we're going to get grab the lips, lips one through seven. Let's select them all still set on emit we're going to animate the image sequence we bring it in okay so now we have the advantage of being able to just grab this and we can kind of put these close together if we like we could even take this and hit control p and make it a child of this so that if the larger one gets animated the lip sync 
layer goes right along with it. Okay, so you're effectively doing all your compositing in 3D space at this point. Okay, so now let's grab this one and take a look at what's going on. And we see that it's going to treat it as eight frames. And so now I'm going to demonstrate what I said earlier. Let's say we want it to play the sequence. Watch this. See, it's playing the sequence. It's just playing all seven drawings in a row. And then it holds. It does a hold. Okay? Well, let's say we don't want to keyframe all this. Let's say we just want her to start talking at frame 12, so half a second into it. Okay, the way you do that is just change your start, start value to 12. That says Blender, play the sequence, just do everything as normal, but don't start until you get to frame 12. Now, if everything goes as expected, you can see that it did exactly that. But again, that's not really what we set out to do here. So let's go with the normal case. The normal case would be start frame is going to be 0. The number of frames is going to be 1. Just makes it really simple for us to work with it. And the offset is 0. Let me see here. Um, yeah, it's still like the 0, 1 thing is still kind of in play. But now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set a key. So you hit the I key, boom. All right. And now at frame 12, we say, well, what lip, what lip sync shape do we want? So this is just like, um, this is just like, uh, what do you call them? A switch layer in uh, Anime Studio. Same idea. You've just got this image sequence list, and you get to choose which ones you want to see and when. So I hit the I key here. I tend to like lip sync on fours. Uh, let's grab that key just for demonstration purposes, obviously. And we'll grab this one. And we'll bop it in right here. Okay, so there's all our keys on the lip sync. And it should it should do um it should do nothing. Ah, yes. Okay, so this is exactly what I was talking about earlier. So hold on a second. Let me make one little adjustment here. I'm actually going to raise the size of this so it matches the other. Doesn't have to be perfect necessarily, but we want to just kind of be able to dial that into position. Okay, so now this is what I was trying to show you earlier. You say, well, I set my keys for the lip sync, but it's jumping. It's jumping all over the place. Okay, well, that's because you want to use constant interpolation. So I'm going to hit the A key over my um, dope sheet. So I select all the keys and switch it to constant interpolation. Now what should happen is Blender's not going to switch between these images until it gets to the keyframes. And indeed, look at that. It did exactly what I told it to do. Okay. The one thing I'm having a little objection to here is though, it seems to me this key didn't take. So yeah, let me switch this to that frame, that shape, and hit the I key. And there we go. Okay. So let's just take a look here. Okay, yeah, now, so obviously having only 24 frames for our animation is kind of stupid. Let's set it to 60. So we got a little bit of room to let this play out. And now we've we've taken these elements that we created in Krita and we've completely retimed it. We've created a whole new scene from those assets. Let's talk about the emit thing here for just a moment. Um, as far as being able to control the... Uh, the image sequences in Blender were pretty much done. Okay, now let me check something here. Okay, yeah. Um, what if you wanted to ping pong it? Okay, I'm gonna raise this up a little bit so I can see just the lips here. If you wanted to ping pong it, let me show you how you do that. First of all, you could you could repeat things by just duplicating them. So you just grab the keys that you want to duplicate and you hit Shift D to duplicate. But what I want to do is ping pong it. Ping pong means uh, run it in reverse. So the way you would do that is you would you would grab your keys, make a copy, and then go S minus one. S minus one means scale the keys. You're actually scaling the keys them. You're not scaling anything in your 3D space. You're scaling the keyframes themselves. Negative one meaning completely reverse it. And then I hit the G key to drag these keys up here, and now I have a ping pong version. So what should happen is it just goes in reverse. It goes from this to this and then back. Okay? So now if we wanted to really ping pong it, 
And by the way, to be fair, this this middle key here is being repeated, so technically that's not needed. So if we really wanted an appropriate ping pong, what we could do is go like this. I believe if I got this right. Okay, so I basically got rid of the center one that duplicated, and I also ignored the first one because it duplicates at the end. So now what should be happening is back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So that's really useful in anime because a lot of times you'll have a situation where you've got little animated elements that need to either loop or ping pong in the background. And you want to just have that as a completely separate animated element all of its own. Okay, so at this point with the dope sheet and animating the offset, you have everything you need to do whatever you would ever want to do in an X sheet. You know, if you want to change the timing a bit, fine. Just hit the B key, draw a box around these keys, hit the G key to go, which is how Blender moves things, and just move them. See? You with me? So it's all there. Everything's there to do what you want to do, what I've wanted to do for a long time. As I said, when I, I think that there was even a time when I, I tested hitting this, animating the f number of frames, animating the start time. In both cases, you know, Blender gives me this message that says, you can't animate that. Um, and maybe I gave up, you know, prematurely and never noticed that you can animate the offset. But that, you know, that's on me. So anyway... Now, what I was alluding to earlier about the emit level is if you go to your material, let's grab this one. If you go to the material, what you find is that if you turn your emit level down, then it goes to black. And you can crank it up so it's really bright too. Okay? And why is that useful? Well, one reason it's useful is that what if you wanted to really do some color correction in this scene? So I'm going to go to the top view. I'm going to back up here, and I actually have a light already in the scene. It happens. So I'm going to put this light right here. I'm going to make this light blue. Let's make it obnoxious blue. Okay, so now let's go to our front view. And as you can see, as we crank up the energy from that light, it's tinting our scene. So now all of the energy that went into giving... <laughs> I know this is going to sound a little snarky, guys, so please forgive me for that. All the energy that went into creating a unique... Um, grease pencil modifier for tinting and doing exactly like lighting and all the the very stuff I'm doing right now is now possible to do with the blender grease pencil well it turns out that capability has always been there all along with image sequences and frankly in my opinion in most cases most real world cases working with image sequences uh, and a different program for your um, for your uh, you know, dr hand drawing animation is going to be way more um, productive, in my opinion, than trying to use the blender grease pencil anyway. So now, as we see here, by putting two lights in the scene, um, we've been able to to tint our character. Now, the one thing about this whole situation, I'll leave it to you guys to sort of figure this out on your own, but um, it does seem to me that the the alpha for her background should be transparent. So I'm not sure why it's not showing up transparent. Let me just look here. If we go fully rendered, as you can see, we're, we're, getting, we're getting this weirdness here because of the emit levels. If you really wanted to light the scene with blender lights, then you would want to turn the emit all the way down. That You probably know that because this this um, image is actually emitting its own uh, light. So as far as the minutia of working with the lights and all that, which frankly for me, I probably wouldn't actually use that often unless there was a really good reason. But I could see a situation where you want to use a light to um, to just maybe add a gradient effect. Because see, if you get this really, really close... You can you can kind of focus its effect so that it has some fall off to it. See what I mean? And uh, to really see it, we got to get it super close. So I'm gonna go like that just so I can see what I'm doing and move it real close like that. So so you can see the blender lights definitely have an effect and can be useful uh, when we go to render mode. Then you see it it 
it tints your character exactly as you would expect. So, I, you know, I'd say use it judiciously, but it's kind of nice as an option if you need it. So the, the question I was alluding to earlier is why, uh, why does her image not have an alpha channel? Now, if we let's just play with this a bit, if we switch it to face textures, that doesn't seem to make a difference because the transparency is actually baked into the. Um, uh, well, here you've got your transparency for the object set at zero. You got the Z transparency, and then uh, the the uh, the actual texture should be being applied to the alpha and it is okay so that just makes me wonder if there's something winky about the ping files that were uh, kicked out of um, Krita when I originally uh, rendered that image sequence yeah they're pings so but I'm gonna leave that to you guys to figure out I, I will tell you that I've definitely used ping images that have been rendered from Krita and the alpha channel shows up just fine so yeah, that's not going to be something I'm going to be labor at this moment. So, well, the long and the short of it is that I like the idea of being able to use image sequences in Blender, uh, map to planes, in order to do. Well, here's the biggie right here. Let's take let's take this, and uh, we'll size it up. So I'm hitting the S key. Sorry, wrong one. S key. Okay. So now, the, here's the killer reason why you'd want to do this. I'm going to open up all of my layers and look through the camera. And now I'm going to turn on auto key framing. And I'm going to just hit the J, G key. And now I'm going to go up here. And let it auto key frame in this case. And right here's the killer reason why you would want to do this sort of thing um, because trying to do this make a smooth camera move like this in um, in Krita would be enormously difficult it's easier in open tunes but here obviously as we can see there's a pretty easy way to do it in uh, in blender so the key for me for a long time has been to be able to have this kind of control over image sequences in blender and frankly I've, I've really wondered why that ability wasn't there well, I'm an idiot. It turns out it was all along. So with that, we will call it a day. And as you guys know, there will be more later.